Welcome to the Glory Tabernacle Prayer Line together with the Consuming Fire Radio Ministry. We are now in the portion of taking uh, of hearing the Word of God, and before I call on Bishop Mel, I would like to call on Sister Claire to open up in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for tonight. We welcome your Holy Spirit's presence on this prayer line. And, Lord, we want to lift up Bishop Mel to you as he brings the word that you have given him to share with your people tonight. Lord, anoint him, and, Lord, let us hear from you through Bishop Mel. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. May I call on Bishop Mel? 
Hallelujah. Good evening, everyone. This is Bishop Mel. We are now in a segment where we can share with you the holy and precious word of God. The title of the message tonight is God uh, called to serve with power. Called to serve with power. Our text tonight came from the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 1. Let me just open up in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you once more that we can come together on this prayer line, live God, to praise you, worship you, and give glory to your name, God. Thank you, Lord, for the many blessings of God that you've given each and every prayer intercessor here and those who have been prayed for, O oh God. So thank you, Father, whoever, thank you, Lord, for whoever lives so, to make intercession for us. Lord, so tonight you are looking for intercessors once more, and we respond. We respond, Lord, to your call, and we will call upon you continually. We will steer ourselves, God, to take hold of you every night that we are here on this prayer line. Thank you, O God, for the gift of righteousness, O God, that we can lift up every prayer request that has been sent to us tonight. You have posted us as a watchman. On your walls, we will never be silent, day or night, and we will call, call on you, Lord, and we will give ourselves no rest, and we will give you no rest until you, until you, uh, you have answered all the prayer that has come to your throne of grace, power, and healing. Thank you, Lord, for the word that you have impressed upon my heart tonight. I exalt your word. Hold it in high esteem. I hold it in high esteem and give it first place in my heart. I will make the word final authority tonight to settle all questions that confront us, O oh God. Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory tonight, God, for we are in your presence. We want to lift you up, O oh God, all the way, O oh God, till we, we lifted up all the prayer requests tonight. So thank you, Father, O oh God, for filling us with your presence tonight. We give you praise. We give you glory in Jesus, in Jesus' precious, precious, holy name. Our, our message tonight, title is, Called to Serve with Power. Called to Serve with Power. Text tonight from the, Ro from the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 1. It says here, Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. You know, the idea of being called by God usually brings to mind, you know, women and men who serve as pastor or missionaries, even evangelists or bishop, or in some other full-time capacity in a church or ministry organization. Such people are certainly compelling examples, but they are not the only ones God calls. God has a plan for every person's life, for every believer. First, His plan involved freely, offering salvation through the atoning sacrifice of his son, Jesus Christ. And he then decided to use the redeemed life, the born again, those believers to show his love and compassion to others and warn a lost world of the consequences of sin as God calls them to serve with power. You know, the story of, of Jeremiah, though Jeremiah lived before Christ, he ben benefited from the grace God showed to believers during the Old Testament. He was given a mandate from God to proclaim the truth in, in a very dark period of his nation history. So Jeremiah's calling 
from God in years of ministry are not intended to be an exception but rather the but rather the rule of how God desires to use men and women young and old you and me in reaching lost souls for eternity you know maybe maybe if God calls you you say ah Lord God behold I cannot speak I don't know how to speak the word for I am a child and you know Jeremiah said to God in response to the divine call to ministry and we are going to go through the book of Jeremiah Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 4 to 19 so open your Bible Jeremiah chapter 1 verses 4 to 19 so here in verse 6 he said, Ah, Sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am only a child. So this is the complaint of Jeremiah, even though he heard the call of God. Even Moses, remember, at the burning bush, voiced uh, similar doubts about his speaking ability. He didn't know how to speak also. Even Solomon, remember, called himself a child when visited by God in a dream. He do know nothing. Anyone who would be used by God must approach the Lord with a deep sense of humility. But there's a fine line between genuine humility and human excuses in order to avoid uh, the call of God. Moses, remember, put forward so many excuses during his burning bush encounter with God that he made God angry. Can you imagine that? He angered the Lord. So as you listen to the message tonight, put yourself in the position of young Jeremiah. Take inventory of your shortcomings. As honestly as Jeremiah admitted his, he's only, he's only a child. That's what he said. And he don't know how to speak. So take your position as Jeremiah admitted his. Then look at God's message to Jeremiah tonight in our text. So at no point did the Lord ask Jeremiah to accomplish anything in his own strength. God don't want him to use his own strength. That's why he calls him to serve with power. So here we could see re repeatedly God told Jeremiah that he would provide the word to say and, to stre and the strength to carry out its task that he is going to do. So God has an, in, uh, has an eternally significant purpose for every believer, you and me, and he will work in partnership. Remember this. When you have a call from God, he will work in partnership with you, with anyone who obey him. You are no exception. He definitely equip you with power to serve him. He just don't want you to go out there and do your own thing. No! He will equip you with power go to jeremiah chapter 1 verses 1 to 10 maybe we will go to this text tonight you know the book of jeremiah opens with you personal details about the prophet if you're a student of the bible you know some of this he came from anathoth a, Le a levitical town located about three miles from jerusalem in the tribal territory of benjamin so Jeremiah was a priest, okay, based on his own admission in verse 6, he was inexperienced, doesn't know nothing, he is only a child, or perhaps just starting in his ministry when God calls him. 
Yet the word of the Lord would come to him throughout his life. From the reign of Josiah through the end of Zedekiah's reign and into exile a period of some 55 years. So now God has had always known of his plan for Jeremiah. God has a plan for Jeremiah and also have a plan for you and me in these last days. Even before Jeremiah was ever born, his divine calling had been established already. It says here, before I form you, verse 5, in the womb I knew you before you were born. I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nation. So here we are. God could see the full extent to which Jeremiah would serve him even before the prophet knew of his calling. So Jeremiah would be a prophet to the nation here. Verse 5. Giving God's message concerning Israel as well as divine communication outlining events that would happen to the other great kingdom of Jeremiah's day. So when the messianic prophecies of Jeremiah are considered, listen to this, the impact of his ministry extend to the entire world and for all time, even today. So God saw his entire plan for Jeremiah already. So Jeremiah could only see his present circumstances and his inexperience. Every believer, you and me, must understand both of these factors when seeking God's will for his or her life. You know, human understanding is always incomplete and unable to see beyond the here and now. So divine understanding is always complete and, and it compasses also eternity. So you can trust that God has a plan for your life. That plan begins with receiving Salvation, you have to know this, through faith in Christ. The plan started in your life when you received salvation through faith in Christ. God set you apart as His child and gives you gifts and ability to serve Him. He will equip you with His power to serve. So you may not have a ministry that involves public speaking, but God does have a place of service for you in which you can make a difference in the lives of others. God is looking for you to be faithful in using the ability, the talent that God has given you with which He has equipped you even now. So God spoke words of encouragement to Jeremiah here in our text. He told the newly commissioned prophet to look past his own limitation and fears and just commit himself, yield himself to obeying the Lord's command. That's why verse 7 it says, But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a child. You must go to everyone. Can you imagine this? Go to everyone. I send you and to say whatever I command you. So, so Jeremiah has been guided to what, uh, to what he would say to the people he will encounter. So here he told, uh, he, so obedience would guarantee God's presence and and help as Jeremiah spoke all that God commanded him to say. So God then touched Jeremiah and placed his word in Jeremiah's mouth. Can you imagine that? Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. Hallelujah. Can you imagine if God will do this to you? You have the word of God in your mouth. You know, some may view Jeremiah's encounter 
with God as an ex as an experience unique to the prophet. But God's provision for the man or woman or child who will serve him in this day and age or in this century is no less complete than the provision he made for Jeremiah more than six years before the birth of Christ. God has given his written word to his church. As his follower, the Lord has has equipped us, you and me, to be his messenger to this nation. So through the ministry and gifts of the Holy Spirit, believer, Christian believer can speak forth word sent from sent from God to the lost. God has given you the word in your mouth to speak to the lost. Go to verses 11 to 16 of Jeremiah chapter 1. God started Jeremiah on his lifelong prophetic mission with two visions that summarize much of what would follow in, in Israel history. Number one, Jeremiah's first vision was less than spectacular. He saw a rod. Verse 11, The word of the Lord came to me, What do you see, Jeremiah? I see the branch of an almond tree. I, rep I replied, A very less spectacular uh, vision. So, but this simple image carried with it, with it a, a, the truth or key, truth, the foundation of truth. So the almond tree is one of the earliest trees to bud in the spring. So God explained he was ready to quickly carry out the plans he would share with Jer Jeremiah. Number two, God next showed Jeremiah a boiling cooking pot facing away from the north. It says here, the word, of, the word of the Lord came to me again. What do you see? I see a boiling pot tilting away from the north. I answered. So God explained that the pot symbolized the calamity, the upheaval, the suffering, the persecution from a northern army that would invade the land of Judah. So here as later as as this as later chapter in the book of Jeremiah show the armies united under Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar would eventually capture and overrun Jerusalem. Verse 16, I will pronounce my judgment on my people because of their wickedness in forsaking me, in burning incense to other gods, and in worshipping what their hands have, have made. So this is the thing now. Verse 16 offers two important perspective on, perspective on the event that would take place. Number one, Despite the physical presence of vast foreign armies that would lay siege to Jerusalem, God is in control. He remained in charge of all that would happen. He was orchestrating this event as judgment. Number two, the tragic defeat that Judah would suffer would be the result of their long history of idolatry, spiritual rebellion. So Judah's faith is a warning to anyone, even today. Whether it is on the national or personal scale, sins continue to have a, a tragic consequences even now. So God in His mercy, in His mercy often withholds judgment of sin for a season. He withholds it sometimes. But listen to this. He never ignores sin. The Bible repeatedly warns that evil, cho uh, evil choices result in God's anger. It is the wise believer who repent of sin and accept God's gracious forgiveness before divine correction or judgment is ministered. 
Go to verses 17 to 19 of Jeremiah chapter 1. Verse 17, it says here, Get yourself ready. Stand up and say to them, Whatever I command you, do not be terrified by them, or I will terrify you before them. So, so this is the command of God. This is the command of our ministry on the street, evangelism. God gave us the word, and the people would listen, because the power in the word of God. The simple words of instruction to Jeremiah begins this passage, and they are full of application for every Christian today. God told Jeremiah to get ready, and is telling us in this day to get ready. When the believer discovers God's plan in motion in his, in his or her life, the Lord expects His servant to be diligent. The spiritual discipline of prayer, the spiritual discipline of Bible study, going to the Word of God daily. Don't, ne don't ne neglect the Word of God. Don't neglect the prayer. For example, keep the believer ready to meet the daily challenges of living with power to serve. So God commanded Jeremiah to be ready to convey any and every message that God would give the prophet. Jeremiah could not pick and choose which part of God's message he would share. Whatever God told him, he would speak to the people. If he allowed fear to change what God commanded him to proclaim, Jeremiah himself would face God's judgment. The same as for us. We don't, we don't pick and choose what we have to say. We have to say what God has told us to say. Believers are given a similar mandate today. The Great Commission calls on all believers, you and me, to take the gospel message of hope to the lost world. Matthew 28:18 to 20 it says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations because I have given you the authority. So the good news is to be shared across political, social, even ethnic. All Christians carry a great responsibility. All believers are promised God's provision and power if you serve Him. Carrying out the mission of reaching a lost world like Jeremiah, believers are encouraged not to allow opposition fear of opposition to deter them from proclaiming God's word. That's why through His promises, God offered His strength, His power to the prophet. Jeremiah would be like a fortress, an iron pillar, a brazen wall. Today I have made you a fortified city, verse 18. An iron pillar and a bronze wall to stand against the whole land. Can you imagine the whole land against the kings of Judah, its officials, its priests, and the people of the land? That's what the Lord told him to say and to do. It did not matter whether the people who opposed Jeremiah were the most powerful, whether they are the king, the president, the official or priest, Jeremiah would be able to stand against them because God equipped him with his gift, with his ability, and with his power. So Jeremiah's messages were not going to be popular. We know that. Your message will not be popular. From the beginning, God promised that he would be opposed. But opposition would never bring defeat. Never. They will fight against you, verse 19, but will not overcome you, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. So, so believer, you and I will face, un, uh, will face opposition. He or she or you may experience persecution as you declare the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, but the ultimate victory is at hand in your life. 
So Jeremiah stood publicly for God in a society that had forgotten the Lord and was living in rebellion against Him. In many ways, the idolatrous nation of Judah finds its parallel in modern time today that have a long history of Christian influence. That's why in nation around the world, church today is an empty testimony of the power of God. God still look for believers today who will take an uncompromising stand for righteousness and declare the good news. But God still promises to empower you and me, a messenger with his wisdom, with his strength, with his power. To follow the Lord wholeheartedly even when it means confronting people with their sin is no light decision on our part. But souls wait to be saved. Souls wait to be salvaged in this last day. Why? Time is very short. When death at any moment can plunge the lost into eternity. Any moment they will die without saving them. Will you offer yourself in service tonight in these last days? That is why we are here tonight to bring the good news of those who will yield to Him. Yield to God. Jeremiah was a man of great faith entrusted with a great message. Every believer are entrusted with a great message. Followers of Jesus Christ must also exercise great faith as they carry the message of the gospel to every corner of the world. To all nations, the Christian life is one of the great challenges of today, of coming up against very real opposition to one's faith in Christ. And yet you will persevere because God will equip you. So in responding to such opposition, the Christian has powerful support. God has sent His Holy Spirit to give guidance, to give com- comfort, and to give wisdom, to give power, to give ability. So Jesus went to great length to outline the benefits of relying on the Spirit while living in His in this sin-darkened world we have. The Spirit-filled, the Spirit-led believer can have a dynamic ministry today in spite of opposition because God is with you. The key is being obedient to God's leading and living out that obedience every single day of your life. God called you to serve Him with power in Jesus, in Jesus' precious holy name. Let me just close up in prayer. Hallelujah. Ooh, God is the only true God who can give you the power to serve Him. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for your word tonight that reveal your enduring covenant with us, with your people, to serve with power as you call us, Lord. Help us to see that your covenant is for us and for our family. Your commitment to us will never fail. You are our faithful God. Strengthen us, Father, in, my, in our ability to remain faithful to the commitment and yielding we have made to you. We want to be able to love and serve you with all our heart and with all our soul and to others. We are yours, Father, and you are ours. We want our desire to always be in your direction. We want always to follow you. Keep us from all idolatry, Lord, in this world as we serve you with power. Help us to be rooted and grounded in your word. Always we want to be steadfast, unmovable, continually abounding in your work, even 
in this last days, God. Thank you, Lord, for your promises that you will not, never leave us, nor forsake us, nor even destroy us, nor forget the covenant you have made with your people as we serve you and equip us with your power. Not one word of all, not one word of all you good, good promises has ever failed. You never failed, Lord. We always remember your covenant in the, oh, even in this last day, and we will endeavor to obey you until the last breath that we are to take. You are our God, and we, and we will ever be your servant to bring the good news to the lost world. In Jesus, in Jesus' precious holy name, amen. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Thank you, Bishop Mel, for that word. Hallelujah. The the message is titled, Called to Serve with Power, taken from Romans 12, verses 1, and Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah 1, chapter 1, verses 1 to 19. Hallelujah. If you need to... Hear all the messages again for today. Go to our website, Glory Tabernacle Prayer Meeting dot blogspot dot com. Hallelujah! Thank you, Bishop Mel. We are now in the portion of taking your prayer requests, praise report. Once again, this is Glory Tabernacle Prayer Line together with the Consuming Fire Radio Ministry. We are broadcasted globally tonight. For all our listeners, silent listeners, prayer intercessors, the line is open for you now. May I have the first prayer request? Anybody with a prayer request or a praise report? The line is open now. I have some prayer requests. Um, the first one is from Brother Robert and his wife. They received their final grades of the first year of their Faith Bible Institute, and um, it was difficult, but they passed. And this year they're going to begin their second year next month, starting August 23rd. And they said, please continue to pray for us. And also, um, Angela, her friend Jorge, is in the hospital since July 4th, fighting for his life. And Emma is said, I made it out of bed again, and I thank you so much. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this word that we received from you tonight through Bishop Mel. Help us, Lord God, to serve you, Lord God, that no matter what our abilities are, Lord God, as we rely on the Holy Spirit, Lord, you will equip us to do what you've called us to do, Lord God. And Lord, tonight we lift up Robert and his wife taking Bible um, classes, Lord God, that, Lord, you would give them the wisdom and the understanding to know your word, Lord. Lord, we also pray for Amanda, for her friend, for complete healing and restoration that they will be able to get out of the hospital. And also for Emma, we pray, Lord, thank you, Lord, for sustaining her, Lord God, and helping her on a daily basis, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Claire. Anybody else on the telephone with a prayer request, praise report? May I call on uh, Sister Lila? Sister Lila, are you on? Yes, good evening, Pastor Marina. Good evening. Do you have any praise report or a prayer request? Uh, 
I just want to thank, thank God for the strength for every day and their protection. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Anybody else with a praise report or a prayer uh, prayer request? Well, I guess um, we have no other prayer requests or praise reports, so let's go. Maybe, uh, Pastor Marina, uh-huh. uh, if we can please continue to pray for Grandma Grace for strength. Okay. Thank it's you. Uh, mother, of, uh, mother of Pastor Kumar. Oh. Thank you. So. Okay, thank you. Can you uh, please pray for the Sister Grace, Pastor Kumar's um, mom? Okay. Heavenly Father, we lift up Sister Lila's request for Sister Grace, Lord God. Lord, we pray, Lord God, that you would strengthen her, Lord. Strengthen her in her inner man and as well physically, Lord God. Lord, give her strength in all areas in her weakness, Lord, you are her strength. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Anybody else Thank on the you. prayer line with a prayer request or a praise report? <laughs> Hallelujah. Anybody else on the prayer line with a prayer request or a praise report? Uh, yes, Pastor Marina. Oh, hi, Sister Cynthia. Go ahead. Praise the Lord. I just want to give a praise report. We know that last time we prayed for a young man who um, was going to look for a job. Yes. Remember? Yes. Tyler, Tyler, and other things. So we want to just thank God that he did get a job. Amen. And, uh, He's going to do orientation on Friday, so we want to this. It's a new hundred, so we want to have to give God thanks for this breakthrough for him. Fresh certainly will. You hear me? Yeah, I hear the bus. <laughs> There's a lot of noise. I'm on the street. There's a lot of noise. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I'm saying we're giving a praise report for Tyler whom we prayed for last week, I think it was, and yes. he was going to a new convert, and we want to, he had a prayer request for um, a job opportunity, yes. and so he went for the interview, and he did get through, and he will have orientation on Friday, so we want to just give God the glory for his Praise faithfulness. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Cynthia, for the praise report. Okay. Hallelujah. Anybody Hallelujah. else on the prayer line with a praise report or a prayer request? We will come to Tyler. Everybody from my brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. This is Sister Connie. Oh, hi, Sister Connie. I have a priest report. Yes, go ahead. Praise him. Very nice. You didn't come tonight? Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. Very good. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, we heard. We hear you. Okay, thank you. Uh, I want to give thanks to the Lord. Because God is faithful and He is truly a provider. Um, I know I had uh, I had shared a press report. Uh, it was um, Monday night. Yes. That uh, I said that when I come to my apartment, uh, there was. Uh, 
a check on my table waiting for me and it was uh, sent on the mail and my landlord put it on the table and it was money for building the church. And uh, I want to give God um, uh, thanks and I want to give glory to his name and uh, lift up his name because he is truly a provider. If we just believe and we just obey and just uh, wait for his time. So uh, this is what happened. Two years ago, um, our church in the Philippines got destroyed completely and um, um, unable to rebuild it because there was no probation, there was no money available, and the money that I have, I had to help my family first because they were in, in great need. So it was very important to help my family first. And now the Lord had led me to go back to the Philippines to rebuild the church. And he has opened the door and he just, he, he has given me the encouragement and just give me the great, um, get great confidence that it's the time to return, to rebuild the ministry. And what happened recently is I've, I've been getting a call from Canada. And I was not able to, to call back because my cell phone was not connecting. My cell phone did not go through Canada. My cell phone is limited. So I decided I'm going to buy a phone card and, and return back the call that is repeatedly calling me from Canada. And then uh, I finally got, a, got connected. And this is a family who uh, is a brother to the patient that I cared for that passed away a year ago before Christmas. And uh, it was last year before Christmas, my patient passed away. And then also I got sick because um, I got I got the sickness also, and I ended up in the hospital. So, but anyway, this family has been trying to reach me repeatedly, and I finally got in touch with them, and I talked to them, and I told them that I was not able to call them back from my cell phone. And but anyway, I got in touch with them, and they said, you know that our sister's wishes was to give you money. And we are going to send you a check through the mail, and we are we've been we've been uh, asking other people to find how we can get your address. But they were happy that I was able to call them, and they they needed my address so they can send the check. So I don't know how much money they are. Uh, giving, uh, but this, this is, they're going to send it on the mail, and I just give thanks to the Lord, and I said to God, Lord, I am so grateful because this is your will that I will get this money because I don't even know this money is coming, and it is the perfect time because we are rebuilding the church. The money is coming in the perfect time. So God is an on-time God, and God is a provider, and uh, you can never know where the provision is going to come from, but God is going to provide. So it's not our job to figure out how God is going to do it. It's not, it's not, we don't have the ability to understand how it's going to happen. So I want to encourage Everybody, my brothers and sisters in the ministry and in the prayer line and wherever you are in the part of the world, that God is a true provider, but our job is just to believe Him and wait upon Him and just expect, wait and expect 
because God is going to come through. God is going to provide. And I, I just so overwhelmingly happy because God is, is really true. Everything about God is true. And I want to encourage everyone. And if you have any doubt, uh, you need to, to examine yourself and ask God to search your heart and whatever is causing that to heal your heart and make you whole. Because God is a true God and all His promises are true. And I want to give thanks and glory to God in His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen, amen. How beautiful. God is faithful and we need to be faithful too. Hallelujah. And next time when I get the check, I will reveal how much money I got. Amen. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, sister. But I'm laughing. I'm just so full of laughter because God is just so overwhelming, overwhelming. Uh, just bringing joy because, you know, it's just like a child, you know. When a child don't don't even question where we're we going to get the food from. They just expect they're going to eat when they're hungry. So that's how we should behave. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you for sharing. You're welcome. God bless you, Sister Connie. Thank you. And and to you, I say the same. Hallelujah. Everyone, I say the same. Anybody else with a praise report or a prayer request? God is good. Hallelujah. Anybody else on the prayer line with a prayer request or a praise report? May I call on us, Margaret? Sister Margaret, you're on. Good evening, Rita. Good evening, Rita. Oh, hi, Sister Rita. How are you? We're blessed of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. How are you? Do you have any pictures? Oh, yeah. I've been praying to the Lord for months. I got my income food stamps raised from 139 to 194. So the Lord is good like that, you know. I'm I'm grateful, you know. Amen. Thank you. He even took care of me. You know, I'm grateful. Thank you. Hallelujah. We're just um, talking about God is a provider. That's yeah. what our sister said, Sister Connie, for she has been receiving blessings from the Lord. And yeah. we're happy to know that our uh, our prayers are being answered, hallelujah, and we need to be faithful too. Yes, and all things are possible with God, and His supply is limitless, right? Amen. <laughs> the multiplication yes. of the loaves, right? You know. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Anybody else with a prayer request or a praise report? This is good. We have all prayer uh Praise report tonight. Hi, uh, Pastor Marina. Hi, Sister Chip. To God be the glory. Mm. Uh, I have a um, uh, praise report. Okay. That's good. God is good. Uh, I was in pain uh, the other day. And um, I went to... Uh, uh, we were. I went to to uh, to the physical therapy, and I believe God that uh, God touched and healed me, and so I have no pain now. To God be the glory. Amen. 
the back pain in my right. Everything is good now? Huh? Everything is good? What did you say? Everything is good? You don't feel the pain anymore? No, no more. That Hallelujah. Faithful. Keep right. That is true. And um, um, someone asked me for a prayer, which I cannot remember. Ah, in the in the retreat, uh, we pray for uh, um, the mom of Sister Helen. She has some um, new operation, so let's pray for her and all the sick people. Um, like her, you know, elderly people. What did uh, Sister Helen's mom have? Yeah, yeah. What does she have? She's in pain? She has, she has some uh, knee operation. Oh, knee op- Okay. Yeah, knee surgery. All right. Yeah, yeah, let's pray for her. And what else? I have praise report. Um, uh, uh, we had a prayer meeting in the um, in the what you call this in the retreat. Mm-hmm. Some um, 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 somebody declared victory. So to God be the glory. Um, people, it seems people doesn't want to sleep. People want to pray and pray. <laughs> Amen. So that be the glory, I tell you. There was no, everybody was just non-stop, non-stop praying. So I just want to share the joy to you. Thank Amen. you. Amen. That's what we need. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Let's pray for um, the mom of Helen. She has knee surgery and also... Pray for Sister Rita. Uh, one more prayer request. Uh, please pray for someone who is looking for uh, uh, classes, for uh, medical classes, that you can find one. All right? Okay. Thanks. Heavenly Father, we lift up to you, Sister Cheat, Lord God. Mm-hmm. We pray, Lord God, for Helen's mom, that you bring complete healing and restoration as she undergoes um, knee surgery, Lord. Lord, we also pray for um, someone she mentioned looking for a medical class, that, Lord, you would open the door for them, Lord God, that they would have an opportunity to take classes, Lord. Lord, we also pray for Sister Rita. Thank you, Lord, that you're supplying all her needs. Excuse me, Lord God. But, Lord, we pray that you would bring complete healing and restoration of her diabetes. And, Lord, we also pray for her brother John, Lord, that you heal his lungs and provide him a place to stay as well, Lord. We pray for salvation of her entire household. And, Lord, we pray for healing of her uncle. And, Lord, we pray that whatever unspoken need she has, Lord, that you know, Lord, and you will answer her in her area of need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chip. Thank you very much. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Rita. Thank you, Sister Chit, for all those praise reports. Anybody else on the prayer line with a prayer request? Yes, yeah, Sister Mel. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Hi, Sister yeah. Margaret. Yes, I just want to thank and praise God for His goodness and His mercy, His faithfulness. In spite of the problems and the difficulties in life, He still is faithful and He's a good God. He always brings me through my difficulties, and I just want to thank him and praise him for his goodness. I just want you to lift my daughter up in prayer, Tracy. She has a, I don't know, 
and it's, it's a spirit. It's a spirit, and I know it's an it, it, it's a spirit. It's not of God. Anything comes my way, she just want to like oppose me, like you know, I shouldn't have it, or she gets in the way. It brings confusion. It brings bitterness. It brings you know. contention between us and the family. So I just ask you to pray that God will look my eyes to see what she's doing and that God will change her because it's not it's not of God. It's not, you know, it's just not of God. Amen, yes. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Sister Chief, can you pray for Sister Margaret's prayer request? Hallelujah. What is the prayer request of the sister Maria? Uh, for her daughter, who has uh, he has a spirit of just you know, like I don't know what it's a spirit and it's not of God. She just she she exalts herself. She likes to take things like little things, little things come my way, and she would like to like not want me to have it like. You know, she always gets in the way and it causes confusion. Amen. You heard it, Sister Chief? Yeah. Is yes. Like, she's confused. Is that what you say? No, she, she brings, um, like, quarrel between her and her mom. She, yes. She, you know, she brings confusion in... And do Every small thing she makes it, you know, sneaky, trickery way. Yes. yes. That's what it is. Is she saved? No. Is, is she, she born again, Sister Margaret? Does she know the Lord? She says she 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 is a believer, but, you know, she does all sorts of things. So I don't think she really accepts Christ, because if she really accepts Christ, she wouldn't... She wouldn't she wouldn't do the things that she's doing. And um, she has two small kids, eight and four. I always tell her, bring them to Sunday school and get them rooted in Sunday school. That's the foundation. And um, she refuses. She doesn't go to church. She doesn't bring the kids to church. And, you know, How she... The How kids are um, four and eight. Uh, four, four and eight? I'll see. Yes. Well, thank you, Lord, for all these things that you have brought us together in this prayer line, Lord God. You are so good. You are so faithful. You are so true, Lord. Oh, God. We, we worship you and we praise you in this prayer line. We adore you. We glory for your name. We magnify for your name. You are good and faithful. And Father, Lord, today we leave us to you, Lord God. The uh, children of Sister Margaret, Father. Yes. Lord, I pray for them. I pray, Father, that um, you, uh, Lord God, touch their hearts, oh God. Open their eyes of understanding and uh, mm -hmm. open their hearts to you, Lord. Father, I pray that you touch them. You touch them, Lord, whatever they're going through, Lord God. You mm -hmm. touch them, Lord Jesus. Father, as God, the stage of growing up, sometimes, Lord, we cannot explain, and they keep on changing, Lord. But, Father, you are in control of everything, Lord Jesus. So, God, I pray that, Lord, you use Sister Margaret, Lord God, to... You use Sister Margaret, Lord God, to... Uh, to, uh, to, um, for them to learn, O oh God, and to hide your words in their hearts, O oh God, so that, Lord, um, when, they, when they are met by, by um, opposition, Lord, the work of darkness, Lord, they can stand on your word, O oh God, and uh, uh, they can, Lord God, um, even at young age, can understand what the attack of the enemy means and what mm -hmm. the, the, um, the tactics of the enemy 
Lord, I pray for them right now. I pray that you are, even at their age, that you will anoint them, Lord Jesus. You will keep them in the palm of your hand, Lord. You will watch over them. You will cause them, Lord God, to desire your word every minute of their lives, oh God. So, Lord, we entrust them to your hands, even at young age. And we pray that they will grow in the word of God, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord. Oh, God, I pray that you use Sister Margaret, Lord God, to draw them near you, Lord God. But even in young age, Lord, uh, they will know the presence of the Holy Spirit. Fill them with your spirit, Lord God. Fill them with your love and peace, Lord God. Oh, Lord, Father, protect them. And, um, Lord, I pray that you put a heads of covering around them, Lord. Order their steps at all times. Protect them wherever they are. And I pray for every children, oh God, of every intercessor, Lord, today. That you will protect our children. You will keep them in the palm of your hand, Lord. You will watch over them. You will go before them. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, God. You are great. You are awesome. You are the King of kings and Lord of lords. And we just love you. We just adore you. We just magnify your name, oh, God. You are so good and so faithful. And I pray for our children, Lord. Father, protect our children from harm, from danger. Yes. And draw their hearts to you, Lord God. Father, uh, I pray that, Lord, um, you will, oh God, Lord Jesus, order their steps at all times, Lord God. I pray, oh God, Lord, that uh, even at young age, they will, you will cause them to know you in a deep, deeper revelation of you, Lord Jesus. You will bring them to, uh, to the right church, Lord God, that will teach you a word, Lord God, and that, Lord, you will bring them up because you are the real father of our children. So bless our children, Lord God, and guide them at all times. Give them godly wisdom and discerning hearts, Lord God. Oh, Father, we bless you, we honor you. Bless each one in this prayer line tonight. Protect them and heal them. Watch over them, Lord Jesus. And whatever we shall do, Lord, it should be for your glory and honor, O oh God. Oh, Jesus, bless this prayer line. Bless Pastor Marina and Pastor Mel. Bless all my brothers and my sisters who are here tonight, Lord God. Keep them in the palm of your hand, Lord. Keep us, Lord, from evil one, Lord. And help us to pray for one another. Help us to pray when you prompt us to pray, Lord Jesus. And I thank you. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Chit. Thank you, Sister Margaret. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Anybody else on the prayer line with a prayer request? Uh, I have this girl that uh, prays with me on my other prayer line. She's fighting for her life with cancer. A cancer in the lungs that went to a hip. She, she belongs to another prayer group. Uh, if you could pray to love or heal a cancer. Her name is Alice. I appreciate it. Thank you. Alice? Yeah. Okay. May I call on uh, Sister Cynthia? Sister Cynthia? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, can you please lift up uh, Sister Rita's prayer request for uh, Alice? She's also uh, a prayer warrior, but she she has cancer that she said is it is spread. It spread in another area of her body, and she she needs prayers. Thank you. Amen. You can also uh, close after that. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. It is well, it is well with my soul. With my soul, it is well, 
it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul, with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Our Father and our Lord and our God, our righteous Lord and God. Lord, we want to just thank you again for this evening on this prayer line. Father, we want to just thank you, O oh God, for our salvation. We want to just thank you for all, for your faithfulness, O oh God. We want to just thank you, O oh God, for who you are. Our Redeemer, Lord Jesus, you are our Savior. Our hope and our trust is in you, O oh God. We want to just thank you, O oh God, that you, for the peace and the joy that comes from knowing you and surrendering to you. O oh Lord, we praise you and we give you thanks again. And we declare, O oh God, that there is none like you, none besides you. That's what your word tells us, O oh God. And we believe, O oh God. And for tonight, Lord, we thank you for all the glowing testimonies, your faithfulness, answering and meeting needs, O oh God. And so one more time we come before thee. Lord, you are, in your word let us know that we can ask. And if we believe, we would receive. And so tonight we are standing in prayer, O oh Lord, for all those who are asking, O oh God, on behalf of their health situation. O oh God, reports have come from the doctor who has given a timeline for this disease or that disease, oh God, for this or for that. But, oh God, whose report are we going to rely on? Whose report are we going to believe? We believe the report of the Lord. And your report said that we are healed, delivered, healed, and set free. 2,000 years ago at Calvary, oh God. And so, Father God, we ask. O oh God, as we come, we are standing in faith on behalf of this sister, your daughter, our sister, O oh God. And we believe in your report. Oh, Father God, we are, we ask in yet, O oh God. Oh, we ask of it. Not our will, but your will. And how we pray your will will be, O oh God, that she would be healed and be delivered, be delivered from this demon of cancer. Oh, God, that you would stop this right now in the name of Jesus and be totally set free in the name of Jesus. We believe that this is not an impossibility with you. We believe as we ask, oh, God, that you can do it. How we pray, oh, God, that you would do it, oh, God. Where she is this night, oh, God. Oh, Lord, send forth your ministering angels to minister peace unto our hearts. Help her to keep her eyes on you, O oh God. Help her to continually trust you. Whatever the outcome, O oh God, you are there for her, O oh God. And if you be with her, who could be against her? So tonight we will rest and bask in your glory. That you are well able to do this for her and for any other, O oh Lord, who has such a prayer request. Father, we are thanking you for how you are working in the lives of your people. Your faithfulness, O oh God. Oh, Lord, we ask for grace to help us to also be faithful, oh, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, bless you. Bless you. We give you thanks again. Oh, God, we thank you. It is only by your grace, oh, God, that we are saved and that we are kept. By your power, oh, God. Empower us, oh, God, for more and more service. Upgrade us. Jesus, we need you, oh, God. We need you. We will forever need you. And so tonight, we thank you, O oh God, for your presence here with us, Holy Spirit. We have invited you, and you have come down. And so we thank you. We say thank you for all that you have done, 
all that he would do now and all that he would do tomorrow. We give you, we bring the praise and the glory to you alone. In Jesus' name, we pray tonight, O oh God, to you, our Savior and our Lord. I will say, Amen. It is done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Thank you, Sister so Rita, for that very request. Oh, Hallelujah. Thank you for prayers. Thank you. Thank you. May I call on uh, Sister Chief? Oh, it's no longer there. Can you close up it? Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for tonight. We thank you, Lord, for this radio broadcast. Every silent listener, every prayer intercessor, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we heard from you tonight through Bishop Mel's message, Lord God. And Lord, help us, Lord God, to not look on our own abilities, but on your power to serve you and to reach out to those who don't know you yet, Lord God. Lord, tonight we thank you for all the prayer intercessors. We pray that as they lifted up the needs of your people, Lord God, that, Lord, you would also answer their prayer requests as well, Lord God. And, Lord, we pray, Lord God, that as this radio broadcast goes out, Lord God, we pray that many will come to the saving knowledge of who you are, Lord God, that, Lord, you're a God that loves your people, Lord. Lord, we pray that your name would be glorified and honored. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Claire. You're welcome. On behalf of Glory Tabernacle and the Consuming Fire Radio Ministry, we bid you good night. God bless you all until we meet you again on Friday. Let's worship the Lord. Amen.